Hello and what's up everybody, this is Speed from Speed Academy. As in my previous video, I have already introduced you to the Python, what is Python, why we need Python, and everything about Python is present in my previous tutorial, so you, if you haven't watched the tutorial, you will find the link in the description below, or over the top right corner, the IE icon is present, where you will find the same video link. So, I'm starting this tutorial by explaining you an identifier, then we will move on to the keywords and the variables. Okay, so we are going to learn about the three main topics, main concepts of a Python. Okay, so let's start with Python identifier. What are Python identifiers? So, uh, let me just introduce you to the identifier. What is an identifier? An identifier is a name used to identify any of the variable, function, class, module, or other object. If I give you a real-world example, what is an identifier? Then you can take an example. Uh, let me just take an example of a class, okay? So if I go in a class and I want to call some person, then I have to use the name of the person for calling the per same person, okay? Because if I want to, if I want something from that person, then I have to call that person. And how can I call that person? By using the same name of the person, whatever the name of the person. If I am just, uh, if I want to call like Vikas, Ratna, Monica, or whatever the name of the person is, like, uh, hello Vikas, how are you like that? So you are, how you are calling that person? By using the name of the person, no? So this is what we call the identifier means. An identity of the person is the name of a person. Okay, so where the person, wherever the person go in the world is uh, is represented by its name, and this is what we call an identity. And because the person is represented by its name, the name is called as an identifier. Okay, I hope you understand what is an identifier. Okay, so the identifier is same in Python or in another programming language. We also call the identifier the same. So there is no nothing different in that. Huh? You have to. While writing an identifier name, you have to follow some rules, some condition that how you are going to write a Python identifier name. So if you are starting writing a Python identifier name, then the first letter should be an alphabet. Uh, it can be an uppercase or a lowercase or an underscore. Okay, but it can't be a number. You can use number, but after writing an alphabet. Okay, I will show you that what is an example of this Python identifier. Uh, okay, let's just go in the window and let's just call it. So what I can do over here, I can just uh, write it like, uh, this is my identifier, a is equal to five. Sorry, like this five. This is an identifier. And like, this is also an identifier. You can also use it like, and your Python is case sensitive. So this a, small a, and this capital A, both are different. Let me just zoom it out for you. And similarly, I can just write it, but uh, these all are valid, okay. So this three, this three are valid. Okay, you can use it like this. You can use it like one, two. Okay, so this all are valid. I can use it like name is equal to speed. These all are valid. If I show you in my example like this, print a comma underscore comma capital A, comma A12, comma name, and sorry, name. And if I run it, then you can see in my console that I got the same output over here. Okay, so all the things are represented, the different thing like, here is this A, A is 5, underscore is 8, capital A is 59, A12 is 8, and speed, name is equal to speed, okay. So, but, uh, these are the valid convention means you can write the name of an identifier by like this But the thing that you can't do You can't write it like name If I write it like name over here just uh, Like this something like this So you can see that uh, my ident my ID is showing me an error Which is showing like Oh, sorry not we hope uh, but this, I have installed my ID. So my ID is saying that this can't be done. Okay. So you have to separate it by a new line or something like that. It is not identifying that whether this is an uh, identifier or what. Okay. I mean, it's not allowing me. But if I give it like this, then this is correct. Okay. Uh, don't just care about this. This is my something. Like, it doesn't understand what is the written, what is the meaning of the VCAR. That's why it's showing like an unknown word, but don't just ignore it. Okay. I hope you understand what is valid and what is invalid. 
So this is the invalid point. If I write it like again, invalid one, invalid one. So this is invalid. You can't write it like this. But the uh, the above all are valid. Okay, guys. I hope you find you understand what I mean to you. This is invalid. Invalid identifier means you can't start identifying name by using the number. Okay, you can use this following. This these are the convention, but by which you can just these are the rules by which you can just uh, write identify name, but you can't write it like this. Okay, so now let's move on to the next topic, which are the what are the naming convention for this? Actually, guys, these naming conventions are more uh, more we will be more using them in the oops concept. So as for now, I think that you will you can't understand what actually this uh, naming convention mean. I will show you an example, then then also you maybe it might not be possible for one to understand what are this naming convention are like okay so we will discuss that in brief when we are dealing with the oops concept as for now you just understand what are these class name and all uh, so the following naming conventions are like if you are writing a class name on the python okay so you have to start a uppercase letter means you have to write the first letter of the class should be an uppercase a capital letter like if you are writing a class of employee we are class name of employee then you have to write the e of the capital i will show you <clears throat> what i mean uh just give me a few minutes let me explain this through lines three or four lines and then we're going to in the side window and we will i will explain all that detail so what i'm talking about over here that like um okay so the first letter should be a uppercase letter and rest all the identifiers should be in your public identifier and can be in lowercase okay so I hope you understand what I mean. Okay, if not, I will be explaining that in later in the video only. So don't just be like, oh, I don't get it. And the th second thing is that if you are adding an identifier, we start with single leading underscore, then it is indicate that the identifier is protected. Okay, so I know that it doesn't make sense. I will explain what protected, public, and uh, spatial, like private, and all. And the next slide, you can see this is the next slide over here. I have already highlighted it in the and just written in some brief about them. If you're writing an identifier which starts with uh, two leading underscore over here, you can see the two leading underscore, which means a strongly private identifier. Okay, strongly private, what I'm telling it because you can't access this outside of the class. Okay, by using, by creating the class, uh, you can see if you are using the class object also, then also you can't access it outside of the class. It can only be used inside of the class definition. I will show you uh, the example of it. Just wait for a while. And similarly, we have the special uh, language defined special name. We start with st starts with two trailing underscore and also ends with the two trailing underscore. So I will give you the example of them, but then let me just go through this slide and then we will move to the coding part. That what are the this identity this attributes are all about? Okay. So if I'm talking about the public attribute, the public attribute can be accessed. Okay, just give me a moment, while guys, just give me a moment. So what I can do over here, uh, okay, it can be, not, okay. So this is what I'm talking about here, like uh, your pattern identifier, yeah, this public attribute can be accessed anywhere inside or outside of the class definition, okay, so you can use it anywhere. Uh, protected can be used uh, inside or outside under some conditions, okay, certain conditions are present over there, certain rules, certain restrictions are present over there, but the, your private cannot be accessed outside of the class. It can only be accessed inside of the class definition. Okay, so this is what is meaning all about, like public, protected, and all. And you can see that how we are going to name them, like single leading underscore, double leading underscore. Okay, just like this. So protected means the attribute can be used outside of the class definition unless inside of the subclass definition. Okay, if you are not writing the protected keyword, sorry, protected uh, your what identifier inside of a subclass definition means uh, one class nested with another class then you can use the protected one outside of the class okay i will show you what i mean over here but uh the private one can can't be accessed okay and the one more important thing guys that uh, this is the new function that comes in python 3 okay so you can use this for checking the validity of the identifier whether the given whether the given identifier is an valid identifier or not okay so if it's valid, then it will give you like true or if false, then it will be like false, okay? So, okay. So before moving to the keywords part, let's just take a look at the 
identifiers example that's what i mean over here uh, i'm just removing this part and now talking let's just take an example of class so i'm creating a class of employee i know that you can you guys might not get what i mean over here but try to understand it guys so employee Na employee ID, let's just give it like this and I give it like sorry, no, not like this uh, 101, comma and the second one it can be like the guy name employee name uh, don't get it like okay, uh, let's just write it like this okay, okay, so you don't get confused like I have used in double underscore like that okay so and the name should be like feed uh let's just hide the cell z part okay let us make the cell z to be uh invisible to the outside of the class so i can't access it out of the class uh, let us like let depth id to be one ten okay whatever the id you want and now let's just use it use them outside of the class so how am i going to use it so let me just uh, give you a brief introduction like this is the public attribute this is the protected one you already get it by checking the name of the like this is the public this private this is protected because we are leading the single underscore this is strongly private because we are using this as double underscore so we can't access outside so this is just private okay and again this one also the public one So now I'm going to write it like class. Okay. So let this create an instance of the class, it means the object of the class, uh, employee class. So I can write like employee, and this is going to be like employee. And okay. So this is what? This is an object creation of the uh, employee class. If you're not getting what I'm doing over here, I know this, this concept is beyond your uh, level because this is the advanced concept this is the oops concept which we are going to deal in the uh, later in the session so as for now if you don't understand it leave it don't feel it or uh, overwhelming like i don't get anything what the guy is turning up okay we will learn step by step so don't just go ahead okay and now i can use the inside variable so i am using the print statement for output my for my output code and let's just make it small a little bit small so I can use it like EMP and then you can see that I am I am having the access of employee ID. Similarly, I am having the access to my name also. But if I try to use it like employee dot, let me just show you this first. And also. So here you can see that I'm getting the output like employee ID, which is 101 and uh, my name, which is speed and uh, the department ID, which is 10 over here. So this is what we, we are getting. So now, so if I'm writing it like over here, this, so what do you think guys, what gonna happen over here? So let's just try to exit, run it, rerun it. And you see guys that we caught an error over here. Are we receiving an error? Or something like that. Let me just rerun re -run this code, guys. Okay, let's kill the terminal so that we can just get with whether we are getting the output or not. Okay, so here you can see that I'm getting an attribute error and it's saying that employee object has no attribute cell, we double double that still. But we can see that we have defined it over here and it is because this is the uh. You can see this is the nature of the private identifier attribute which can't be accessed outside of the class definition. So if you want to use it, you can only use it in the, inside of the class. Okay. So what I'm doing we hope that now I'm going to create. Uh, so I hope you guys understand about the identifiers and all. Now let's just move on to the next topic, which is our keyword topic over here. So where we are. Okay, here we go. So keywords, what are keywords? So guys, keywords are nothing. Keywords are the reserved words that are that can that you cannot use for defining your variables or any constant or any identified name. Okay. So these are the this following are the name of the some of the keywords that are present in the Python identifier. If you want to know more about keyword, what you can do here, 
you can use one of the libraries present in Python that is the keyword library. So I can use import it by keyword. Import keyword over here. I think I have just loaned it a lot. <clears throat> and then I can use it simply using the for loop. I know that the for loop doesn't make sense for you, but try to understand it. For in, oh, okay, now I'm just directly using, I'm di going to directly use them. So I'm going to use the parent function over here. I'm not even going to use default loop or anything else. Keyword and this kw list. So this is going to return me the your the all of the keywords that are present in the Python. So if I do just rerun it, you can see that I am having the lots of keywords that are present in my Python. So you can see the, these are the number of the keywords that are present in my Python, and you can't use them as your variable name or something like that. Uh, if I try to use them, like uh, I have one keyword like true, so not this, but true, like five, then you can see that maybe I uh, I'm able, but that might give me an error. Just write it like, just let me just try it. Okay, so it is saying the syntax error. You cannot assign to true because this is the predefined keyword. Okay, so you can't use the keywords over here. So it will give you, if there is a syntax error over here, and saying, no, 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 you can't use it. If you just check it out over here in my list, then you can see that true is already defined in my this keyword dictionary, which cannot be used outside of the, uh, your path. You cannot be used for defining or reassigning any of the variable like that. Okay. Similarly, we have a lots of keywords present over here. So you can just check them out by using the same library that I've sh showed you. Okay. And you, you are, you will be aware of them by using, well, using the Python in depth. Okay. So you don't need to mug up all of them. Now let's just start moving to the variables. Uh, if you are the part of the Speed Academy means we are starting from the last year, the web development part, then in the part of JavaScript, I have already introduced you to the variables. Okay. So what are variables guys? Actually the variables is variables are nothing, but variables are the identifiers only. It's the name, it's the name which we use for uh, storing the vari variables value. Okay. But what variable actually are? Guys, variables are nothing but the reserved memory location to store values. And what this term mean, what this line mean, uh, it means that whenever you create a variables, okay, so what your Python does, it will go and check uh, what type of variable you have created, whether it's a string type or a str uh, integer type or tuple type, list type, any type of variable you can define in that your Python. So it will then go to the, if I just show you what I mean over here, let me just open the paint over here and let me just explain you uh, a little bit more in depth about the, uh, your variables. Bang. So uh, just give me a moment guys. Uh, what happened buddy? I can't see my mom. Okay, over here. So if I give it like 50 over here, it's not increasing over here. Why? Okay, not fine. So if I, uh, suppose this is your CPU. Okay, this is your CPU where you have different slots of memory. Your CPU consists of different types of memory, your RAM, ROM, hard disk, pen drive, hard, any type of memory. Okay, so this is your CPU. And we have different type of memory location present in your CPU. You, it can be in present in the side of your RAM or inside of your hard disk. So we have small, small bits are over there. Okay. Just like this, we have present a lot of bits. So if I am defining any of the variable over there, so it's going to be stored somewhere like this. And I can just, uh, if I define like your integer or something like this, then it will going to take the if I just store your integer, then it will going to take like one byte of space. Okay, why am I, okay. One bit of, one byte of space, then something like this, or bit of space, oh yeah. So it depends on the type of the variable that you are defining. If you are using the like, uh, your integer, then it will going to take like one byte, two byte, whatever that uh, language you are using, it may change, I think so. I just don't remember the actual size of the integer and all, but it will vary according to your, uh, type of the variable uh, data type. Okay, your Python identifier automatically identify what is the data type of the variable. So you can just assign it like any type of the variable like this is going, if you are using the integer, then it will going to take one byte. If you are storing the 
uh, your string values and it will going to take like a uh, four byte I guess Some, something like that I just don't remember the actual size of the variables on memory location storage uh, I just read a lot more time ago so as you as I have already discussed about the pattern interpreted in my previous t tutorial where I have just dealing about the that pattern is your dynamically type and what dynamically type means that pattern identifier automatically find that what type of the value what are the data type of the variable have you, you have defined okay so what it does that it will allocate memory to the decided part where where it can be so stored in the reserve of memory okay so it will find the part that this this much amount of memory does the part that this variable is required and then it's going to use this reserve that reserve memory and store your value over there so whenever you need it you just you can just use the variable name and you can just call it the value okay for your future use so that's why we use the your variables for storing the our values inside some as some different allocation i mean as some sub memory location uh, so that we can use them in my future and in future so how we can assign our value to a variable as we all know for assignment we use the equal to operator okay so if i'm using this like if i want to assign like area code i can just use it like this this is the type of int over here uh, so it will take i guess one byte of space in my memory location and the name is going to be speed and it will going to take like straight str so it will going to take like four byte of space and your full loading point is will going to take like two byte of space float or double it will going to take two byte of space and similarly if you want to assign multiple values you can do that also in python so i'm just assigning like single these are multiple variables and i'm assigning single variable single value to them like abc1 so all the different uh, variables abc are going to have the value of one and similarly you can assign multiple values to multiple variables by separating them by commas over here so let me just give you an example that how i'm going to assign i'm going to use this variables and all so let me just define a variable like uh, name so let's just start with the id of so id like dex name is equal to speed uh i can use the floating number okay floating number 12.2 like this so if i give you if i just print out the type of them so i can just write it like type of id comma type of name comma type of floating number then you can see over here that um i'm gonna out getting the output like if i just run it over here then you can see that i'm getting the output like this is this belong to the class of integer this belong to the class of string and this belong to the class of uh float similarly we have different types of uh, data types i will discuss that when when we are dealing with the data types and all as for now you can just uh i'm ending the session over here i hope you guys understand that how this all the things are working i will i have already uploaded this uh markdown file on my github so you will find the link in the description so you can visit and read it by your by your own okay uh thanks for watching guys if you have any doubt if you don't understand any of the topic you can just comment below and i'm here to answer you all the question or you can just directly contact me on our whatsapp i'm there to answer